Hello, I'm Malloy Malloy, Dr. Penultimate Whittlesticks III, and we're taking our last trip around Ten Towns to explore the towns of Targos and the two starting quests. Now, one thing to note about the Targos quest is that it doesn't need to happen at Targos. When the players find Boyd the dog, he'll eventually lead them to Keegan, as written. But before the party goes up the mountain, Keegan will warn them about an incredibly intelligent saber-toothed tiger that roams the mountainside, who doesn't need to eat, but kills and hunts living prey. Keegan says that Garrett calls it a mere myth. This quest is pretty solid. One issue is the fact that it's impossible to avoid the avalanche for the average character. To make it slightly possible, shorten the length of the avalanche to only 120 feet, and assume that the person in the back of the line is 70 feet to escape it. If the players have enough movement speed to escape it, then they'll be fine. If they don't, then they must make a DC 15 deck save or be caught in the snow. If they're caught, then they're thrown violently down the mountain 500 feet, taking 5d10 bludgeoning damage, and being trapped at the base of the mountain. From there, do the avalanche rules as normal. If you want to continue to add challenge to this quest, then I would have a blizzard set in about halfway through the climb. You can also have an encounter with a yeti during this time. After all, they hunt during blizzards. Now this is just a small tip for building atmosphere, but using the howls of winds and beasts up in the mountain is a great way to instill fear within your players. Mountain Goats Unless your party has a druid, furbolg, or some other way to communicate with animals, cut this encounter, or instead have a bloody mess of mountain goats. A DC 12 medicine check reveals that there are bite and scratch marks, but oddly enough, nothing has been eaten. Avalanche. Other than shrinking the avalanche to 120 feet, as mentioned previously, you can keep this encounter the same. Fallen Climber. In the snow is the cold and barely moving body of Garrett. When the players arrive, they can talk to him, and the party might be able to notice the crag cats lurking in the dark. If the crag cats are too much trouble, you can have a loud roar come from higher up in the mountain. The party will see some sort of beast that scares off the crag cats. The frozen cave. This area is great for any player with the little yeti secret to roleplay. Now the only change is to have small signs of a blizzard beginning to whip up before they enter the cave. And then the actual blizzard comes in when they try and leave. Finally, the ruined camp. This ruined camp is kept mostly the same, but from the summit of the mountain is the saber-toothed tiger. It has immunity to cold damage, along with dealing an extra 1d cold damage with its attacks. It also has misty step three times a day, and an ice breath attack, where every creature in a 20-foot cone must make a DC 15 con save or take 3d6 cold damage, and are frozen in ice, stunned, on a failed save and take half on a successful. Cold-Hearted Killer. Now this should be your quest for the beginning. Nature Spirit sounds fun. I ran it. It is fun. But always run cold herd Killer. No matter what. This quest focuses on the party hunting down Sephic Caltro. Sephic is a dead pirate with the spirit of a frost druid trapped inside of him. Sephic works with Torga and is quite the threat. This quest should be about the party going from town to town, learning about clues of the murderer. The players should be about level 3 or 4 before even thinking about fighting the cold hard killer. If you want, you can have the players encounter different killings throughout the town to investigate. If your party starts in the towns of East Haven, Targos, or Brinshander, then you could start the sessions with a human sacrifice. Then the party can discover a crime scene. And there they meet Helen, and the quest goes as written. Now this is outside of the scope of this guide, but you could also introduce other possible suspects, like Yeslam Bloodfang, the frost druid living in Ten Towns, or of course the speaker of Targos. Nature Spirit. So this quest is all about trying to find and capture a Chowinga. Now we're going to make a change to Chowinga lore. Instead of being from Chold, there are actually failed attempts at the Create Magan spell. So they're actually from Yifrin, which is also why we're changing the quest giver to Jazan from East Haven, 
Once the party arrives in a town with the Chewingas, the quest pretty much goes as written, until they find Razan in East Haven, being, well, burnt alive. Or if you want to, sacrifice to Oriel to help set up the uh, Cold Hard Killer quest. Well, that's it. I've finished every single quest in Chapter 1. If you're interested in any other quests, you should just check out the Icewind Dale playlist. Well, I hope you're ready to pack your bags, because we're leaving the civilization of Ten Towns, and next episode we'll be exploring the Dale itself. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you next time.